Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. This is the Royal Rumble campaign. My name is Saiken and today we are continuing uh, the heist of trying to steal this game from Advent. Advent is in firm control. Uh, they are doing quite well, but we're not doing bad for ourselves either. It's a pretty tough uh, one. Operation Bone Hole uh, is, that could be, by the way, uh, uh, very spicy name for uh, for a mission. I'm not going to go down that route. Um, Greta Hansen and uh, 104 Intel are available. Secure that VIP from Advent City. As I mentioned in the last uh, episode, we are not going to use our Prime Team. The Prime Team uh, will now be reserved uh, really for the main missions. They are our lifeline that keeps the run going. And we're also not going to use the second team because they are very much needed in order to uh, counteract Feto Crito, uh, Feo Crito, which is that nasty uh, dark event uh, that we need to counter. So we're going in with a third team. It's um, our third team. Uh, what am I supposed to say? Inquisitor finally got the Colonel, uh, uh, the Colonel rank and is now rocking that one Mimic Beacon that we have uh, gotten. It's a good item, but given that enemies are shooting us for 15 points of damage, it's actually not that good anymore. Um, we got Wilson the second, who is uh, going to be on the back line. Shinrod and Lyrical are making a return, finally. Uh, you can see I put in some extra turrets. Uh, and we have a lot. These are actually quite cheap to produce on top of it. All we need is a, a turret corpse. And we got Aviator and Jaranx uh, who are making a return. So uh, limited shredding on this team, but other than that, actually quite good. Uh, we are fighting against a plethora of enemies, the most recognizable of which are um, Venators, definitely. We do have um, the Andromedon Prime, that's uh, recognizable as well, and potentially the Banshee. Uh, not that bad of a mix. The rest seems fine. We do have um, a Puppeteer Prime as well in there, so we should actually be fine. We got a lot of firepower, and all we need to do is bring the civilian back in one piece. Hopefully. Uh, the Hive Mother isn't uh, going to join us. I think there is a one uh, mm, or two mission grace period before a ruler can reappear. I wouldn't want to have her on a VIP mission. That would be really bad. Good, we're landing. And I am very much looking forward for that. Secure the VIP and proceed to the evac volume for extraction. Advent already knows we're here. Medium range. I like that. Uh, for a second I thought we got a double agent, but then I realized it's Inquisitor. We got quite a bit of high ground here. A valley of doom in the middle that we need to go through. And then we got uh, the exit. And... Am I right to assume that we have not? No, we have not managed to get any concealment. Shinrod carefully moves up. And deploys a turret. There's an Andromedon Prime, got to be careful with that. Wow, so many mechanical things. Uh, we're just going to hide Greta. Because very soon this is going to be no fun at all. Hmm. 
Hmm, let me think. Tired of waiting around. I believe just placing a few more turrets here and there is not a bad idea. Super heavy turret versus super heavy turret. Could grab ourselves all the way up to here. We don't have anyone with death from above, right? Well, not even Wilson has death from above. That is the C team. What can I say? I'm not sure, Wilson, if you can. I have my doubts. I have my reservations about your skills to handle that. But in case of doubt, use more turrets. Could move all the way up to here. With run and gun. Yeah, I don't know if we need to do that. It's still first round. They do have tactical analysis, so they are not a real threat at the moment. They will shoot, don't get me wrong. We do have a lot of hit points. <clears throat> that are going to work for us. Seller to turret gets a free aid protocol uh, together with threat assessment, right? Yep, with threat assessment. Okay. Yeah, welcome ladies and gentlemen to XCOM with yellow alert, you unfortunately need to resort to these brain dead tactics in order to stand a chance. We move down, grapple up here, and then be in the front line. I'll think about it after we have started to get a few of these things down. Uh, I can already tell you I don't want to deal with the Codex, so hitting that. Nope. Okay. Let's try it from down here. Okay, that would not work, but we can very much move over here. Good hit. Codex definitely is one of our main targets here. Hitting and killing turrets. Selected turret flies over. Couldn't fully get the codex, which is unfortunate. Oh, 
Okay. Um. Hmm. I don't want that the codex effectively <clears throat> disables us because it's uh, springing in and gives us a big fat middle finger. That can't happen. Grappling over here. It's not the most eloquent grapple, but we got Procure out of it. We kill the Codex. Could give anyone um, an extra action. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep Whiplash because it effectively will be better against um, enemies that are of mechanical nature, and there are quite a few mechs uh, in here. Justice pull could be an option, but we don't have a, another another follow-up. Although, wait, if we pull it, like that's nine points of damage, so eight, which brings it to seven, and that means he's going to die because we do have uh, Bladestorm. Oh, and he's burning on top of it. That's even better. Well, that assassin should die now. Huge benefit from tactical analysis. Yeah, the turret can't be mind controlled. You dummy. There's the retribution kill that I mentioned. Okay, well, first few losses are happening. And more enemies are pouring in. And more of our turrets are dying. Good, we do have 14 rounds, so we're okay for now. We have no one downstairs, so might as well teach this guy a lesson.
Very nice. Uh, out of curiosity. That's a kill. Good, Inquisitor moves forward. And now is the right moment in time to use Whiplash. Killing this guy immediately. And we have a target rich environment, as they say. Well, well, well. Let's kill that sector. It unfortunately dodges. Now, um, with Lyrical. We could move all the way up to here. And then have a couple of really solid shots into the front line. Might not be the worst idea. Running and gunning. Into full cover. First we need to kill this guy. I knew it. We're going to use a protocol to make it harder to hit uh, our front line and then teamwork because the prime needs to die. Good, Aviator slowly but surely moves up. Four now. We're starting to hit the Brute. Drenx hands over an action to Aviator and then begins to continue to move up. We need more firepower. This is going to be a kill. Wilson is still ready and available. I think before we're moving Wilson in, I will just take the shots that I can. Cool. Overwatching with a super heavy turret. Whew. 
we could move over here that will give the Archon even more reason to blazing pinions us move down to here and then kind of move to here which is a bit of an awkward position no problem boss okay well good hit blazing pinions because it is an Archon after all. Yeah, complete and utter surprise, right? That will kill some of the turrets, unfortunately, because turrets will, uh, the ground will explode and turrets are then going to die. That's some nasty burn right there. They will be as we are. One of the things that I always found annoying is the blazing pi uh, pinions cannot be um, retroactively counteracted. Even if I kill him now, it won't change a thing. It just won't. This turret here will die, no matter what I do. Might as well take the heat. Good, he's down. In my opinion, a better way for Blazing Pinions would be to still allow to kill him in, in mid-air um, and effectively remove the Blazing Pinions. Shinrod moves up, takes a shinny Shinrod shot. Oh, cyborgs take additional damage from uh, from our weapons. We'll come back to that in a second. Shinrod, immediate counter heal. And let's kill this guy. Good. Now, in my perspective, what should happen is all of this should stop. And the game should like realize you know what you killed it in time you're good unfortunately that's not how it works okay Aviator reloads, shoots, and has this guy nicely in in his uh, crosshair. Kills him. We don't have death from above, right? No, we don't. Okay, instead of wasting our lightning hands, we're just going to kill him. And I think this explosion means we're still going to be okay by standing back here. Two fields. This would be destroyed as well. then begs the question, shouldn't we rather go to here? Uh, 
As an Andromedon Prime could move up, shoot, Wilson takes damage, crits, dies, don't want that. So we're taking the safe route. Move into over here. The trooper is still in full cover. That's not good. I can tell you though, we're getting into full cover ourselves. And we're overwatching here. Turrets are gone. More enemies, thanks to the good old uh, yellow alert. What would we do without that mod? Shouldn't be too negative on it. Uh, we did a voting and apparently 55% of you like it. 45% think it's utter garbage. It's a very polarizing uh, mod. I do have my own opinion, which I think I mentioned a few times, but I don't want to influence you too much in the thought process. Um, yeah, well, this here looks very much like a war site. That's the cool part about it. If you have intensive firefights, everything just goes uh, goes to. One, two, three, four, five. Lots of enemies. We still got a Mimic Beacon, which we may use for this turn. First, let's uh, reduce their Overwatch. Dromedon Prime is a problem. It's a prime example of a problem. Oh, that would be a good hit. Yeah, we're going to save that for later. Aviator moves up and I think what we need is cover removal, explosions, all the good jazz. He will kill one and remove all of the cover. Car explodes, done. Look at you. Sneaky, sneaky. Shogoth. Okay, we're going to put a protocol down there. We're not going to deal with the prime yet because it's not prime time you get it prime time gosh my puns are not on point today Shenrod moves up use the opportunity to flank Stupid elite a python. Question is, drinks. 
high ground, stay here, or are we going to take better aiming angles? We want to stand in the open, that's unacceptable, so we're moving to there. And we need to kill. This guy is seven. Out of curiosity. Well, it's not yet a kill. But I know how we can achieve that. So let's get the Viper down first. Fix scales. Doesn't help when I shoot at it. Then it is very quickly not so thick scales. And now is a great time for a Mimic Beacon. I think everybody agrees on that. Shogoth. Sounds a bit like chocolate. Uh, that could have been the one hit kill that I was looking for. Unfortunately, did not hit. Uh, Venators. I get a very distinct uh, nausea from them. Venators are the worst of the worst. Oh, wow, everybody seems to miss. Well, that's good. <laughs> what is happening? This mimic beacon. The beacon of doom. I very seldomly can they even miss. Wow, the most dodgy Mimic Beacon ever. Where is, by the way, our shot? We do have Threat Assassin, don't we? Apparently we don't. Wow, okay, do we have an explosion? No, 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 no. Yeah, we're not going to do that. The Andromedon Prime is just standing there for now. Uh, we don't even have Bladestorm. Mm. Yeah, we need to we need to deal with the Venator first. <clears throat> Elsewise, he's going to become a janitor and mop the floor with us. Lots of options here. question is really whom do we need to uh, shred and I think it's the Venator all things considered he is likely the biggest threat on the battlefield at the moment aviator has enough to withstand one hit of the prime problem is that would explode the car and then he does not have enough hit points anymore so we can't stay near the car because the cleaving strikes of the Andromedon um, would make that impossible for us
almost seems like this here would be the best position but it's also the one that gets us out of range of the venator This is the maximum range to see the Venator. Reload and let's get it. Good damage. It's marked. It clones itself. That'll be a bit of damage to Lyrical, but I can't move her away, not yet. me but I think we need to take this shot here and it's really bad because the weapon range is awful can we we can grapple but the problem is we're staying in the open then and that really is not acceptable either The other option is to use Wilson here, but then we're foregoing the option for a face-off. Are we risking a two-third um, chance to kill the Venator and then dish out more damage, potentially even killing three of these guys? I will play a little bit greedy. Too bad. I would still do it again. It was the right, generally the right play. Well, how about that? well we get a, a hair trigger as a free action, as a reward for daring. That's cool, I like it. The game has its own way of balancing things out. Good threat assessment. Do we want to kill the ben uh, the Banshee or both of the Brutes? What's the damage on the Banshee? Three to five, but she must do something else that sucks. Never dealt with them. Rule of thumb 
if you can take multiples off the battlefield, you're oftentimes better off doing exactly that. Nice little crit. Ah, that'll trigger an extra action for him. Good, Lyrical tanks well. Is now bleeding, but she is actually doing rather well for herself. Getting the Banshee down. We're still at that very entry phase here. That would have been great because it would have killed the drone. Now the next step is get the hell away from the Andromedon because it will retaliate every single thing that we're doing. Running and gunning into full cover. Good to go. Uh, we could put Inquisitor here as a bait. Maybe the Andromedon is going for him. Bait successful. Now we're moving up here. See you later, Prime. It's almost down. Okay. Overwatch with Aviator. And let's get this guy. Ooh, that worked well. It's a dangerous enemy. Might not have looked as uh, such, but he is actually quite dangerous and we have returned fire if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, we do. Oh, we certainly do. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. 
Very nice. Let's make sure that we can kill this guy. Let's do this. Moving up, marking him. That didn't work out yeah, too well. Continuing to move up. Continuing to move up. We still have eight turns to extract and I think we're almost done with the enemies. Greta is just hunkering down, hoping for the best that this tyranny will end. Oh, hair trigger. Well, Wilson is gifted with his hair triggers this mission. The C team actually worked very well. Uh, granted, uh, it's not the most difficult set of enemies uh, compared to the types of enemies that we have fought before. These were actually quite um, serviceable, palatable, but nonetheless, they have done a good job in rushing up and getting them down. We have seven more turns to get out of here. And I would want to check if there is anything that we should be afraid of. No, there is not. Apparently there is still an alien, but that could also mean that there is still a turret somewhere. We'll pick some more cover once we're here. But I wanted us to push forward, like really forward. Tired of waiting around. Aviator moves up. Who's going to be our scout? Okay, we've seen that there is a pack down there. The hit point bars were just shining through. Copy that. Which means we are moving up. Let's check what the hack is going to help, help us. What exactly what the heck is going on? You know what? Might as well give them a reduction in willpower. Haha, uh -huh, take that, aliens. Greta is following us and we're overwatching. Okay, cool. Lyrica is potentially pulling the pack.
running and gunning into full cover here. Trying to hit the perch commando. What is wrong with you guys? Seriously. It's not that difficult to hit someone. There you go. Okay, we're forced to take a couple of uh, faster moves because in order to get up there, this is the way. Power minus two hundred thousand percent. Okay. I think it's fair to say they are shattered. Threat assessment onto our friend here, Dranks. It gives him a nice overview and makes him more difficult to be hit. Overwatching with Inquisitor and might as well just start peppering. So what they are doing is, they are basically hunkering down for turns and are trying to sit this one out, okay? Could grab that elite heavy. And solve that problem, which I think is a good idea. Also drawing a bit of overwatch. Good, he's going to die. Suppression is taken away, which is good. Let's do this. Over here. Aviator moves up. Interesting, we only see the mutant. not reloading we need uh, the momentum in moving forward we want to get over there Roger that.
Might as well use face off because why not? There is no downside. <clears throat> not too shabby. We still have threat assessment for ourselves. Might as well use that. Not quite a kill, but we're getting close to it. Last enemy, if he just overwatches, we're going to move out of here. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he can shoot us once and that's okay. We even have return fire, we should be able to kill him. He shouldn't uh, be able to crit us to death. Never mind, he wanted the melee attack <laughs> and just got curb stomped. Nice. Still good enough. Here I come. Moves over here. And we move over there. And this time, because last time I learned something new after all of this time, there is a known bug uh, when you're evacuating. Always evacuate your VIP first, because elsewise the mission could be considered failed and you're losing all of the valuable, valuable intel. Now that was a surprisingly good mission for the C team. I must say they all performed quite well. Of course, there are shortcomings of the C team. Specifically, their ability to not have death from above uh, is noticeable, but uh, the skirmisher this time is no longer a liability, uh, which I saw a lot of comments in the uh, previous videos about. Inquisitor finally starts to redeem himself. Lyrical, once Blade Storm and Implacable as well. Aviator, uh, chain shot, please. Yes, thank you. and we get more research done which is good uh, can we shortly visit the training center just considering we do have a lot of XCOM AP and what should our prime team 
know about. If we uh, use Salvo for Grell, we could actually give her um, an armor with an explosive. That would mean no turret on her, but we could have some more shredding. She already has death from above, which is great. Comet protocol could be helpful from time to time. Ever vigilant isn't bad and covering fire definitely is good. So, hmm. Chain shot, I think for her is a bit too much, but having salvo in the back pocket, I like that idea. And having combat protocol in the back pocket against mechanical units isn't bad either. Covering fire, however, is good as well. Let's, before we go any further, let's check what the others are doing. Uh, chain shot here would be good. Dilly could definitely use that. Actually, like it a lot. It's potentially the one thing that I would give him. Saturation fire, good. Head of bullets, also good. Saturation fire is AOE damage and long, 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 long range. Hail of bullets, not bad because it is an auto hit. And we can talk about all of that in a second. I first want to know what the prime team is getting because they have dips on all of the big fat abilities. Iconic uh, Ionic Storm is good and Reaper for him would be absolutely fantastic. I want the Hawkbite machine. Uh, we're going for Reaper. That means no parry when he's Reapering, but he can clean up a lot of enemies with it. It's very good. It's very good. We're doing Reaper. Okay, now off to the others, the ones that have their own uh, AP. Okay. Well, all of them are leveled, so... Untouchable for Zirkim would be really, really good. Are we going to spend four of our hard-earned AP into it, though? Hmm. Tell you what, Zirkim. I like you. You're part of the B team. And this is a one-off. I typically don't do these things, but you get untouchable because it's such a good skill and it is also quite affordable. Our skirmisher. Yeah, all of them uh, do not have any additional points. Where should they get them from? Uh, Thumper, however, no, nope. it's none as well. You know, that's not bad, but that is better. So as soon as Haywire levels up, we'll give her better skills. Shinrod has leveled up. Run and gun would be fabulous. Scanning protocol, however, isn't bad either. What else does he have? Dead eye good. Rupture too expensive. Head of bullets. I think run and gun is good. It is so usable in most of the situations. Wilson could get a run and gun as well, or we're getting death from above, or we're getting kill zone. Hmm. Hmm. Dead eye isn't bad either for what we're trying to do. Can't believe that I'm toying with the idea of giving him kill zone, o uh, kill zone over death from above, but since he's not getting the prime sniper rifle, oh. that might be a good idea. Run gun is disgustingly good on snipers as well. Hmm. I think we're going for kill zone. It has helped us so, so often. It's more for this particular campaign where everything is so over the top. Normally I would not do it, but here it makes sense. 
Dranks, uh, Haywire? What do you think, buddy? Salvo isn't bad either, but Haywire is better. For him. Exor, run and gun. Run and gun is always good. Uh, what do we have? Guardian? No. Shadow Strike? No. We're just going to wait here. Starts off with cereal. Well, nobody. Mm -mm. That's not your gift. You shouldn't uh, use cereal. But there are a couple of other locked, so we're going to use that. And yeah. Fabulous. Viper autopsy is going on. We got what we came here for. So let's progress with the Geoscape. So far the month is going quite well for us. Avoided an alien attack. Did remarkable research in remarkable time. And... Ooh, nice! Wow, we can now create frost bombs. Hmm, that might be a game changer. I actually like the frost bomb a lot. And it's a really good CC item. And crowd control is what we need. See, that is a cool idea. I actually congratulate the modder for coming up with that. That's a really good item because I, I personally believe it should have never made uh, unique. You should have had the chance to build these things. They are not so overpowered, specifically since the radius is very small. Um, yeah, alien black flame grenade is uh, intri intriguing me. Custodians is are very intriguing. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to go for that Ultra Black Flame Grenade in the hopes of finding the Holy Grail. What can I do for you, Commander? Big fat EMP bomb. We can, by the way, build more uh, Selected Turrets, which is great. Rift Anchors, new. Sustenance fear would be good, but I want to save our cores. Um, no, it seems that the frost bomb costs extra. Oh no, it does not. 25 supplies. Uh, consider it purchased. Oh, you only get one. Hmm. Well, it's not ultra bad. It sort of is not great, but it's not ultra bad. We need to save Valerium, so... Let's not play around with that. We're reading you. Cool. More income, and that means make contact. Clear. And now we got laboratories provide an additional 20 boost to research time. That was important. And we still need more contacts. And we even have contacts left over. Uh, that would be plus one soldier in some of the missions. Might as well do that, really. But we don't have the intel. Well, 
that could only mean one thing, which is Avengers gain more intel. Another important step forward. Good, we get the alien black flame grenade. Grenade is our soldiers, no doubt. Uh, personally, would not hesitate. Describe it as such. Was like to make the note difficult as research team encountered analyzing the weapon. Blah 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 blah. Being blah 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 blah. Direct contact with it is ill advised. Only brought uh, into more psychonically gifted troops and assist. We understand the truth really is. Essence it can be uh, described as a psionic recorder. Device holds itself massive psionic energies tries to infect any living being that comes into contact with the device, hence strange symptoms. Um, I believe that the weapon comes directly from the elders themselves. They pour their psionic power into these devices so it can be used as a tool to, in war to quickly overwhelm the minds of the enemies. Um, this allows the aliens who do not possess psionic gifts to implement a fraction of the elders' powers, powers in their arsenal. But that doesn't make any sense. They, in the one sentence he says only psionically gifted um, should carry that, and then in the next sentence he says with having it you can get big fat psionic powers although you're not psionically gifted. While the manufacturing of this device is incomprehensible, it's possible for us to create more crude versions and simply require the engineering team to uh, create a suitable vessel for our psionic forces to feed it with their own psionic powers. Black Flame Grenade. Powerful grenade that overwhelms the minds of the enemies by unleashing stored psionic energy. Hmm. That was somewhat anticlimactical. Continuing with the Custodians, they are a good source of OP items, I feel. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, still a no. Let's see. Uh, black Flame Grenade. tempted to do that but I'm equally tempted to get the spider suit which I know is going to be good yeah we're going to get the spider uh, the uh, serpent suit and I also want the metician ba uh, bla uh, battle suit god damn it Well, we're going to test out the uh, the grenade. If this grenade is the best uh, thing since sliced bread, then of course we're going to go with it. Rage suit is a fantastic option, so that will go straight onto the only person who is allowed to rage, which is Euler. Looks funny with his head. Um, color scheme still needs to be there. Okay. Well, my dude, you do have uh, the biggest and meanest and baddest suit. And he's clearly uh, working out on his legs and his rear area. Very good. We're teaching um, the psi operatives the additional moves that they need to know. Advent custodians. Okay, now I consider me interested. New research custodian, grandmaster, autopsy, magician pattern magiti, uh, magnetic automatic shotgun this power uh, this extremely powerful uh, shotgun is capable of firing multiple shots in quick succession
researching the Grandmaster. Wait, what? We can build another Rage Armor? Oh no, that is the upgrade. Okay, I get you. No, wait, what? Yeah, it was the upgrade. He now has more mobility and more health and more armor. Okay, cool. Well, the world is still consistent and I'm not uh, becoming insane with all of the mods installed. Um, what else do we want? So much stuff that we could build and I have no idea whether or not it's any good. One core. This extremely powerful shotgun, it's not just powerful, it is extremely powerful, is capable of firing multiple shots in a quick succession. Um, you know what? Scratch the black flame grenade. When something says it's extremely powerful, it better is extremely powerful. Elsewise, I'm going to be pissed because our good resources are being spent on that stuff. 55 Intel, cool, that's good. Now, we want to locate the Raiders HQ, the Mar Marauders base, which will be a job for our D team. Halop. It's getting an animat kit and a vest to not die. That is a good idea. We put a ranger in here. We'll give you a vest and some blue screen rounds. Sounds about right. We put another grenadier in into the mix. Beam cannon. And a sniper would be helpful, so that we have the basics covered. Uh, sharpshooter Wilson is not for your team. We're missing another sniper. I mean, Van Dieu could uh, help out, I suppose. Or we're giving Bastard an, a real chance because he had been helping. He has been helping us so much. At the same time, he never had a chance to really go into a mission. And this is one of the very few situations where I think he could help us and wouldn't be a liability. Okay, sounds about right. Uh, we take 12 days and we will get the marauders down the support of your soldiers. by the way 
make contact yes please more supplies and why is there a cultist base here i thought i killed all of uh, the enemies but maybe we've just found yet another faction i think the cultists actually also exist well we're going to get them sooner or later advent exalted custodian grandmaster autopsy brain cord made from the remains of a grandmaster the device can interfere with the advent network tower debuffing all advent troops on the entire map that sounds delicious and very 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 powerful What else do we want to do? Armored Psy Viper. I know we've started that, so might as well want to New continue with it. Brain Cord. Two Illyrium Cores. The question is, how does that work? Like, is it gone afterwards? Potentially not, right? It doesn't say that it is a one-use only item. Okay, in terms of soldiers, Prime Team fully available, I think I think we have reached the point in the game where we are going uh, to do the last uh, mandatory for the Golden Pass mission. And this Golden Path is leading us right into the Australian bushland, where we are next time going to fight. Not less than 53 enemies. Uh, Spectre Prime. Wait, what? Prime Soldier, Brute. Uh, Sec uh, Spectre Prime. Perch Mech, Shield Bearer, Heavy Mech, Exalted Pathfinder, Collector. Andromedon Dreadnought. We didn't have that yet. Uh, Black Ice Codex. I didn't have that either. Archon Prime. Okay, a couple of new enemies. Because it's so many enemies. We even have a couple of new ones in here. Andromedon Dreadnought. Codex, Boa, Purge, Purge Elite Vanguard. Lancer, Black Eyes, and mm, fan Fanatic Crusader. Yeah, the Black Eyes Codex uh, is new as well. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, we need to battle through this, potentially another two hour mission. Oh boy, this game keeps on giving. Okay, if you uh, love to our missions, give me a thumbs up, grab the popcorn and like the video. Thanks guys and see you very soon. Bye bye.